Welcome to the online worship service of Triumph Lutheran Brethren Church. Triumph is a multi-site church in the Midwest with campuses in Moorhead, Minnesota and West Fargo, North Dakota. Our vision is to see the life and message of Jesus transform hearts, homes, and cities. We're grateful that you've joined us online as the Lord works through our ministry both locally and around the world. Wherever you are at, our prayer is that God would meet you and that the life and message of Jesus would transform your life.
Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is a fascinating scripture that we have to consider today. And it's a really critical part of, of Jesus' story. Have you ever wondered how old Jesus was when his mom and dad began to tell him the story of their family and, and give him a sense who, who God had revealed to them that he really was? For example, um, the story of Jesus' birth, amazing story a story where, where angels are involved and, and they leave their hometown and go to a special town, Bethlehem, the city of David, where, where he was born. Perhaps he had questions why. At some point in life, Jesus came to understand who he was. And he came to understand his purpose in life, why he was here. I wonder how old he was when, the parent, when his parents then told him the story of the, of the shepherds uh, appearing a, after he was born and declaring that they had received good news of great joy that in the city of David, a savior had been born who was Christ the King. And, and now that is an amazing thing um, for uh, parents to hear about their child, that, that he would be the savior of the world and that he would also be the, and, and that, that, that would mean that he would be the Christ, the Messiah who God had promised in whom the whole nation of Israel had been longing uh, for his coming. And the story of Jesus was not only these exciting things, there were some things that were actually quite troubling. For example, I wonder how old he was when, when he learned about the visit of the Magi, these, these fascinating wise men from far away in the east who came to worship him and bless them with extravagant gifts. And that's kind of the cool part of the story. But we understand that in order to find Jesus, they stopped and talked to King Herod in Jerusalem and asked where the king of the Jews, or the one who would be the king of the Jews, was born. And uh, his wise men or his biblical scholars said, well, he would be born, the, next, the king would obviously be born in David's city, the city of Bethlehem. And, and, uh, and eventually, of course, that meant that uh, Herod was aware that something was up in Bethlehem. And he sent out uh, a squadron of, of, of troops to assassinate this little one. And, and, and in fact, he thoroughly uh, uh, executed all the little boys that were under two years old of age. God had spared Jesus' life, for his time had not yet come to die. Joseph and Mary took him to Egypt, prompted by an angel, fled as refugees to Egypt, and, and laid low there until Till Herod died. This was all part of Jesus' story. And as, and as Jesus grew older, he became more and more familiar with the story and the sense of what it meant for, for him to be the Messiah. You know, we call people who, who think that they're the Messiah, who think that they're someone special, think that they're someone who has what it takes to save the world. We have a term for that. It's called a Messiah complex. And I guess I have to say that in this, in, in this upcoming season or current season of political discourse, that uh, I wonder at times if, 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 you know, I am so grateful for people that, that uh, feel a calling to run for public office to serve the public good. 
We should pray for these people. God in, instructs us to pray for rulers and those in authority that we might live quiet and peaceable lives so that his gospel might advance. But this, but this sense of power and authority, this sense of, 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 of feeling like, it, like, like they've come to save uh, is, is troubling at times. How old do you think Jesus was when he learned that, uh, that, uh, that the, the scriptures of the Old Testament actually were pointing to him. Jesus grew up in a devout Jewish family. He, he went to, to synagogue where, where the scriptures were read and explained, and eventually it would have had to come upon him that, that these scriptures were talking about Messiah. So Jesus was steeped in the prophecies of the Old Testament, in the stories of the Old Testament. And we know that by the time he was 12 years old, he was beginning to understand his identity. As his parents went up uh, to Jerusalem, uh, much like uh, we are uh, thinking about today as, as, uh, on this, uh, we call this Palm Sunday because we think about Jesus going into Jerusalem, but Jesus had gone into Jerusalem with the pilgrims who were going up to, to offer sacrifices and worship and feast at the temple. He, he'd done this since he was a, a little guy. In fact, when he was 12, uh, his, his, his parents... Um, after going with, with their village or their, or their family traveling group to, to celebrate uh, uh, in, in Jerusalem on the way back, Jesus was missing and they were troubled. And, and so they came back looking for him and Jesus was in the temple. And there was this kind of tense interaction between Jesus and his mom and dad where Jesus says, well, why were you so worried? Wouldn't, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house. As Jesus grew older and growing into the role, the part that he would have in God's great plan, in fact, actually the reason that he was born, he became more and more aware of who he was. And this was critically important, especially with what lie ahead of him. By the way, we're not going to talk much more about Jesus growing up because honestly, we don't know a lot of the details of, of, of his growing up. Because once he gets past that age of 12, oh, the, the scriptures are pretty silent until he comes on uh, to the scene as a man uh, around 30 years old and, and with the anointing of the Holy Spirit on him as he begins to reveal the kingdom of God and, and teach about the kingdom of God and gather around him a, a, a few people, 12 in particular, that he would pour into, that they would change the world. So let's get back to the story that, that we're um, thinking about together today. Um, Jesus is, is uh, aware of the fact that his name means Jehovah saves. And in, in Hebrew, it was Yeshua. And that wasn't a really unusual name. That was a, a fairly common name. But for Jesus, this name was a literal, literal description of his purpose in life to save. And, and at some point growing up, he would have heard the prophecies like the, like the amazing prophecies in Isaiah about the one who would one day be the ruling king, but also one who would be a suffering servant. And so he heard this kind of perplexing combination of Messiah being described as a suffering servant and one day the, the one who would take David's throne. And as Jesus heard these things growing up, we know that the, the Holy Spirit was infusing him with a sense of, of his identity and his purpose. As, I, as Isaiah described the lamb that would be led to slaughter. As, as, as Isaiah read that the Lord would lay on this lamb the iniquities of us all, this is shaping Jesus' understanding of his future and his purpose for being here. The last, uh, last week was my wife Kathy had an interesting visit uh, with her parents. And uh, basically, the, it was prompted by one of our, our kids asking her questions about where we came from, our, our family story. And, and honestly, we, after we said, you know, I don't know, or that's a good question, we realized that while Kathy's uh, parents are still here, that this would be a good time to ask some questions 
about, uh, about where she came from. Because where she came from is not only a part of her story, but cer- certainly the story of our kids in our, in our uh, family. Well, of all people, Jesus knew his story very well. So when the time came on, on, that, uh, on that morning when he would, w- would enter into Jerusalem that we're remembering today on this day that we call Paul Sunday, Jesus went into that, into that morning fully aware of what lie before him. He knew, he knew his identity, he knew who he was, and he knew his mission. So as wherever he spent the night uh, before that, on the east side of the Mount of Olives, in fact, you can visit the Mount of Olives today. There are still incredibly old, uh, fascinating olive trees on the Mount of Olives. And from the Mount of Olives, you can look across the Kidron Valley and see the east wall of Jerusalem. And you can see the eastern gate now, uh, now plugged tight by, by, by stone. But the eastern gate that was open at the time where where Jesus entered the city. These events that we are talking about are not fables. They are not folk stories. They're part of history and the most important part of history. But as Jesus got up that morning, his heart and his mind were infused with an understanding of what God was doing and how so important the coming week that we would call, that we now call Holy Week really was. Let me read again for, uh, for you from Matthew chapter 25. Uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You know, this might seem kind of like a head scratcher. You know, why, why, why the donkey? Why would Jesus come in as a donkey? But... Um, when Jesus told his friends to, to, to go into, into the village ahead where, where, the, where this donkey and her, and her cult would be waiting, he did this very purposely. This is not random. In fact, Jesus knew that, that what he would be experiencing that day was very much a part of God's story because Jesus knew from the words of, of Zechariah the prophet that Zechariah had prophesied that the day would come when this would become a reality. In Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, we read, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus understood what the prophets had said about him. In fact, when, when Jesus was going into this week, which would be so difficult, would be like such an inadequate word to describe some of the events that Jesus would, would face and experience, especially on that Friday that we call good, as the sins of the world were weighing on his heart. Jesus knew what was ahead of him because the prophets had, had revealed God's plan through, through prophecy. And we might say that, that, uh, that Jesus was in great danger as this week approached. Oh, he was in great danger, all right. But Jesus was not in trouble. Jesus was safe and secure. Yes, the suffering would be real. And he would agonize even over the thought of it. He would sweat drops of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. This was lived out by a real person in real time, but he was like no other. For his heart and his mind were clearly and thoroughly attuned to the will of God, his Father. He was not in trouble because he was in the center of of God's will. And as the week that we call Holy Week unfolded, 
it would unfold just as God had prophesied, including the fascinating way that Jesus would enter the city. Jesus understood that in his role as the king of heaven, that in this part of his role, his full glory would not yet be revealed. Certainly on that day that we call Easter, when or Resurrection Sunday, we see the glory of Jesus in his power over death. But Jesus left this earth with unfinished business. He will return, and he will return in glory, and he will banish evil, and, 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 he, and the devil will get his due, and judgment will happen, and everything will be set right. He will come with power. But at this part in God's story, he came with gentleness. He came with meekness. He came riding the colt of a donkey whose mother clip-clopped along beside this colt that Jesus was sitting on. He came into the city riding on a colt of a donkey. He came as the meek king who would one day return as the mighty king. So the, the events of, of, of this morning or, or th this day were certainly prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. And looking back, we, we realize that Scripture is a wonderful treasure. It not only defined Jesus' identity and Jesus' purpose, but your identity and your purpose as God is calling you into this story Jesus not only came into the city gentle, humble, riding on the, on the colt or the foal of a donkey. He came into the city hearing the cries of the people that had messianic expectations about him. And uh, we find these recorded in Psalm uh, 118, verses uh, 25 and 26, where Jesus is, is exalted as, the, as we hear the words Hosanna explained here and in, in Isaiah chapter 25 and, and 26. In fact, I'm going to grab my Bible here and share those with you. Excuse me, Psalm, 18, Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26. We, we find these words... Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Hosanna, Lord, save us. As Jesus is coming in as, as the one uh, who is drawing out messianic expectations from the, from the hearts of the people. Oh, Jesus' heart, I'm sure, was, was full at this time as he was experiencing uh, the, the cries of his people, because that's exactly why he came. He came to save them. Jesus grew up singing the songs of his people, including Psalms 113 through 118, which, which, uh, which were sung on, on their way up, especially to the Passover feast, where they came to, to offer uh, sacrifices, lambs whose blood was shed as, as a sacrifice for sin. Uh, the Passover meal were the, were the lambs that represented uh, the lambs that were slain back in Old Testament days when, when they were uh, slaves in Egypt. And, and, and God said, if you, would, if, if you slay a, 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 a lamb and, and apply the blood, to the doorpost of your house when I bring judgment over, over Egypt. The, the, that judgment will pass over you and you will be saved. As the people are, are shouting, Hosanna! As the people are flooding into Jerusalem, waving the festal palms, for this was a festival, Jesus was realizing that he was coming not to offer the blood of a lamb, but to offer his blood. His blood, as John the Baptist pointed to Jesus at the beginning of his ministry. He said of Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It was time for that to happen. 
So as this is happening, some of them who had experienced Jesus as he taught with such power, beautiful power, painting a picture of hope, he called the kingdom of God, as he revealed that kingdom with compassionate, beautiful miracles that literally changed people's lives. Those who had experienced it or witnessed it or heard about it were certainly in the crowd. No wonder that their hearts were stirred. But there were others there that asked the most important question, really, that any of us can ask. Because the answer, when we understand the answer to that question, it changes our lives and our destiny. As the crowds uh, were, were, were uh, watching Jesus file into Jerusalem, we hear them say this, the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered, the, entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? That's the question. Who is this? The crowd, crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Were they right? Of course. That was an accurate description of Jesus. He was, he was one who was as human as they were. He had a, he had a place that he called home uh, where he grew up. He, he, he had a family. He had a life. He was human in every way, but he spoke with authority from God. He was a prophet who was from Nazareth, but he was more. He was like us in every way, but, but he was the only one who ever lived who could save us from our sins. He was the only one who could who could fulfill the role that God had prophesied as the Messiah. He was more than a prop, prophet from Nazareth. He was and is the Messiah. So that question, who is, could not be answered until the events of this week we call Holy Week were fulfilled. For Jesus was more than a prophet. He was the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. And he is the one who would do as he said, three days later, rise from the dead to announce that there's hope for all of us, that death will not keep us, but that he will have the last word and we will experience eternal life with him forever. So the question of some in the crowd, who is this, continues to ring uh, across history. Jesus knew fully the answer to, the, to this question for his Father in heaven declared shortly before Jesus went into Jerusalem that day on a moment when he took a, a three of his disciples to witness his glory on what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. As Jesus was revealed in his glory and, and, he, and he met with, with, with Moses and Elijah and talked about what was coming, God spoke from heaven and said, "'This is my Son whom I love.'" With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. The best thing you will ever know in this life is the answer to the question, who is Jesus? When you come to know and believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Messiah, God's anointed one, the Christ, that Jesus is the King of heaven, and that through him you have access not only to the family of God where you're adopted in, but a place in the kingdom of God where you uh, have significance here as you serve him, as his kingdom is, is, is being uh, advanced here through his church. But also you will be, have the opportunity to experience the new heaven and the new earth as, as one who is serving the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. When you come to believe in Jesus as your Savior, and you pledge your allegiance to Jesus as your King, as you look to Him and cry, Hosanna, save me, He will. That's what He does. That's what He came to do. That's who He is. That's His part 
in God's story. Of course, it's the central part. But as you come to understand and believe and trust him for who he is, it changes your understanding of who you are. You become a child of God. The father who said to Jesus, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. When you come to faith in Jesus, when you believe him for who he is, when you trust him with your life, you have the same heavenly father who says of you, this is my daughter. This is my son whom I love. With her, with him, I am well pleased. Their sins have been taken away. They belong to me. As, as children of God, they are now citizens of heaven. And their lives are being protected. They are being provided for. And one day, they will rule and reign with him. That's who they are. Because that's who Jesus is. That's what he's done for them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that uh, this story, as curious as it is, with the palm branches uh, that were part of the, uh, the festivals in Jerusalem, with Jesus coming in on a donkey just as the prophet said he would, with Jesus even coming into the city knowing what was ahead of him, we're part of that story. He's doing it for us. And we're so glad that he is faithful. We thank you that this upcoming Holy Week, as we think about what our King did in laying aside his glory, taking on our flesh, and being obedient to death, even death on a cross, that we might know freedom from sin, that we might know peace with our Father in heaven, that we might have hope and purpose in this life. We thank you that we become part of your story in a beautiful way when we understand who Jesus is for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey. I'm Pastor Doug, and I want to take a minute and, and say thank you for watching the worship service today. If you'd like to extend your time of worship, we have a couple links to worship songs that fit today's message in the description down below. You simply click, and you can spend more time uh, with Jesus in your day today. I have three quick thoughts that I wanted to share with you, and it'll only take a minute. First, we'd love to connect with you. If you'd be willing, you can visit our website at triumphlbc.org connect and let us know how we can reach you. Or you can visit triumphlbc.org events to find an activity that you could jump into. Second, we hope that you see this content as a supplement to your walk with Jesus. Our digital content really isn't designed to replace belonging and engaging with a gospel community. So whether that's here at Triumph or at another church, we invite you to find a community that you can connect with. And third, we invest a lot of resources into producing content that's used to bless people just like you all over our community. If this or any of the other resources we have here at Triumph have blessed you, would, would you consider giving? It's because of your generosity that we are able to continue creating and serving online.